Hi there YouTube, this video is probably going to get my channel flagged down um, and then we have to go to the Vokter 616 channel because if this video gets flagged down it will be the third strike on this channel. I've been doing a lot of thinking the last months since I sort of lost my energy making videos on YouTube and there is reason why I lost my pizzazz, my energy doing this and the reason is called Felita the Geek and all the things that she has done to several other users besides myself coercion, blackmail, harassment, flagging Dog dropping, name calling, lies being spread. This, and it's divided parts of the community. I'll use this term very loosely here into people who are. Petting Felita the Geek on the back and others who hate her guts. I do neither. But this whole Felita the Geek thing is actually the reason why I think about YouTube as being like. <laughs> Things went on all the way back to November last year. And uh, it's still going on. The channel I'm linking to down here is the third edition of the channel that is exposing everything Felita the Geek and her goons are doing to other people here on YouTube. And uh, it is, I, I think it's a telltale that this channel is, the user behind this channel, I don't even know who it is. Uh, is being flagged down instead of refuted, instead of debunked. Um, it should tell you out there something that the channel that is dedicated to exposing Felita the Geek is not being refuted by Felita the Geek or her goons, but instead is being flagged down all the time. Like someone out there is afraid of what this channel is saying about Felita the Geek. I've gotten to the point where I don't really care if I have an active channel here on YouTube or not. So I decided to make this video telling a little of my story with Felita the Geek. When I first stumbled on Felita the Geek, she seemed like an awesome power, like an awesome woman doing some really good stuff. The first time I really got eyes on her was when Cookie Inc. was forced DMCA'd and Felita the Geek offered to drop her docs to him so he could file or uh, counterfile uh, this false DMCA. <coughs> and he did that. And everybody thought, wow, how awesome is Felita the Geek just dropping her ducks like this? And But at the time, nobody really knew that her ducks were already dropped all over the internet. Because in Germany, apparently, if you blog, you had to drop your ducks. Uh, you cannot hide behind anonymity in, uh, in Germany, apparently. It says a lot about free speech in Germany, in my humble opinion. But again, this made Felita the Geek sort of famous back then with some of the more prominent YouTubers of which I was one at that time. Um, and a lot of people started trusting her for this. And, and that's just the way it is, isn't it? Um, I worked together with Philly the Geek on many occasions, uh, collab videos, uh, helping other people who have been false flagged and false DMCA'd, and she seemed genuine, and, and she seemed 
like a really morally upstanding person. Boy, was I wrong. I had some dealings with other YouTubers that ended up in drama and Philip the Geek meddled in one of those dramas and was the mediator between me and that person and later I found out uh, actually pretty fast uh, if five weeks is fast I found out that this that Philly the Geek has been lying to this person about me and to me about this person which perpetuated the drama so it went on for five weeks somebody else stepped in and was the mediator and the whole thing was settled in 45 minutes the thing is I trust Philip the Geek about as far as I can throw a 40 ton blue whale And later on, well, Felina de Geek is a flirty kind of woman. No, I don't think that's a bad thing. I flirt with a lot of women here on YouTube, or I have when I was active. It's all fine and dandy. Uh, I like flirting. But when I started cyber dating Eli, Something happened in the background that I didn't pay attention to. I, I didn't really see it until it was all over and the dust has settled. Me and Eli were getting really serious. We were talking about her actually coming here to Denmark to check things out and maybe if things worked out we would move in together and live together as a couple. So that was kind of serious because I am a dedicated single man. I like my single life. And for me even to contemplate this is, is, a, is a huge thing. Very huge. And for Lida, of course, uh, I, I had to... Her flirtations were getting... She really wanted... She wanted to shag me, okay? Uh, she wanted to do something. And, and I had already, before this, sort of turned her down very nicely. And, and one of the things that, that uh, and this was probably one of the things that really pissed her off, is that big women, I don't mind people being big, but, but big women just don't do it for me. They, they just don't. They have to have an hourglass shape. Uh, I'm sorry. That's just the way I am. Uh, I admit it. It's, it's, it's. It's, it's vain, it's, um, how should I put it, it's um, a little superficial and all that, yeah, but who isn't? We have a saying here in Denmark that you, you, uh, what turns you on is what goes in through your eyes and what keeps you there is what is beneath what your eyes can see. Big women just don't do it for me. I'm sorry. If they are hourglass shaped, yeah, by all means, I don't mind if they're big. Uh, I don't mind if they weigh like 20, 25 pounds more than the BMI thing. I don't mind that at all, actually. <laughs> well, you don't have to be skinny to flirt with me, or you don't have to be... Uh, like really thin and, and, and model like at all that's not the point but but women shaped like this sorry they just don't do it for me I have to have a I don't know go in words in the middle so to speak to get me going and that's all for Lita this very nicely and very politely and on the surface she accepted this then I started cyber dating Eli as you might know, and, and that went on for quite a long time. And Eli and I got more and more serious about it. And where is Eli now? Someone's girl. Her channel. Poof, gone. 
over a thousand videos, silent movie videos, that she had fought very hard and worked very hard to make available for everybody on the internet. All silent movie clips that had copyrights on it where she was the sole person allowed to publicize these videos. So we could see the cinematic history of planet Earth. All gone. And who made her go away? Who chased her off YouTube? Fenita the Geek did. There's no doubt in my mind that Felita the Geek is a lying, conniving type of person. A person that does anything and has no morals whatsoever and has no scruples whatsoever in fighting her enemies, her personal enemies. Eli was one of those because Eli was helping in exposing her. But if you go back a little here in YouTube history and watch what was going on, Eli was the one person who didn't say anything about Felita the Geek. She was the one person who didn't do anything about Felita the Geek, not even in the background. She was the one person begging the rest of us to stop messing with Felita the Geek. And for this, Felita the Geek dropped her ducks. And for this, Eli closed down her channel. And we lost over a thousand silent movie videos and more that was to come. We lost a part of cinematic history. And this makes me sad. Anybody who still thinks Felita the Geek is the bomb or is in any way trustworthy or in any way a good person is simply deluding themselves. Felita the Geek is not to be trusted. I wouldn't trust her with one euro. I wouldn't trust her with shoveling my shit. There, I said it. This video is probably gonna get flagged. And I really don't care. Some things just need to be said. Do not trust Felita the Geek. She will fuck you over.